Welcome back, Wastelanders. This is Blackfly coming to you with the Charisma Perks breakdown for Fallout 4. This is pre-launch speculation. My sources are going to be orcs.com and vault111.com. Check their perk charts out for some more information. Um, the first one we've got is Cap Collector, which is a returning perk from previous Fallouts. It's going to give you better prices at vendors. And um, it looks like this one's been changed a little bit, so... At rank 2, the uh, vendors are going to have more caps and better stock, and then at the max rank you can actually haggle with the vendors to try and get a better price. So it'll be interesting to see how that haggling system works in Fallout 4. Below that, you've got Lady Killer or Manhunter, and this one's a returning favorite, but it's actually got a bit of a makeover. Um, plus 5, 10, 20% damage by rank to men or women, and you can choose regardless of your gender you can choose which perk you want, whether you want Manhunter or Lady Killer. So that's really interesting. That means that you can play as a male and then still get the damage buff on men um, rather than having to play as a female. And then, Or you could do the same thing with a woman. So I, I always tend to get the Manhunter. I would try to get that one if I could because generally there's more men in the Wasteland than women. Um, so you'd get a nice damage bonus. If you combine that with Bloody Mess, you've got a pretty nice damage bonus right out the gate, regardless of what weapon type you're using. Um, so let's see, it also increases your Persuade or Deceive or Intimidate chance in dialogue based on rank. Um, I believe the lower ranks give you Persuade, and then next up is Deceive, and then Intimidate is the max rank. Uh, Lone Wanderer is the next perk on the list. And this is going to give you bonuses when you're traveling without any companions. Uh, you take 15, 30, or 50% less damage, and then you also get a carry weight buff of 50, 100, or up to 200 pounds. So if you like to travel alone, um, that is definitely a perk you're going to want to pick up. In addition to that strong back perk, you could get a combined buff of up to 400 pounds of carry weight, which is insane. Uh, so that's definitely on my list, because I love to hoard all the things, and... I want as much carry weight as humanly possible. Although, I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to be traveling alone that much because I love dog meat. Next on the list is Attack Dog, which is a dog meat perk. At rank 1, it'll allow dog meat to hold an enemy in place, increasing your hit chance in vats. And then the next rank will allow dog meat to disarm or incapacitate multiple enemies in large groups so you can deal with crowd control better. Uh, max rank, he can actually do lethal takedowns on targeted enemies. So that's going to be really important if you're planning on traveling with dog meat for most of the time. You want to max him out so that he can help you out in combat as much as possible. Next perk is Animal Friend. Um, this is a returning perk from previous fallouts, except rather than just randomly allowing nearby animals that are below your level to come and aid you in combat, this one allows you to actively pacify them by aiming at any enemy animal below your rank and uh, you gain a chance to pacify them when you aim at them with a gun. At rank 2, after you've successfully pacified them, you can make them attack. Um, and at max rank, after you've successfully pacified them, you can give them specific commands. What these commands are, we'll have to wait and see, but I would imagine um, you could tell them to follow you, you could tell them to possibly guard your settlement, which would be really useful. Um, for some of the higher level animals, you could build like an animal army out in front of your settlement to protect your stuff. Um, and there's some other perks that will allow you to do the other types of creatures. We'll get to that later. Local Leader is next on the list. And this is going to be a primarily settlement based perk. It allows you to open up supply lines between your settlements and move your resources. So like, if you had one settlement that was generating a lot of caps and another settlement that was generating a lot of raw materials, you could send the caps to a different location and send some of the raw materials to the place with the caps so you could manage your settlements that way, which is going to be really important if you want to get into that base building mechanic. At rank 2, it allows you to assign a companion as a settlement leader, which will allow them to automate resource management and give a little bit of extra protection to that settlement. So that's going to be pretty cool and definitely something you want to pick up if you're into base building. Party Boy is next on the list, and at rank 1 this is going to keep you from getting addicted to alcohol, and it will possibly give you some kind of bonus from alcohol. 
And um, at rank 2, your companions can drink, and they get a morale boost and a little bit of a combat buff while they're drinking. And at the max rank, your settlement res residents can drink, and this will increase their productivity, which is pretty neat. So before, in previous playthroughs, I've never really looked at that perk, but because I do want to get into the base building mechanic, that may be something you want to pick up. And basically, the message of this is, if you want to do the base building, charisma is going to be a really, really important um, skill set for you. So you want to max out these perks pretty early on or as you discover those settlements. Once you've got your second settlement, then you're going to want to start pouring points into this so you can do that resource management. Below Party Boy, we've got Inspirational. At rank 1, this is going to allow your companions to do more damage and they can't hurt you if you played the early Fallout games, um, and even Fallout 3 in New Vegas. If you were in combat, a lot of times your companion, if he was standing behind you, would shoot through you and actually hit you instead. And uh, Ian, in the first Fallout game, actually killed me a couple times, that bastard. Um, but this will prevent that from happening, so they can't actually hurt you. And then rank 2, they can um, take, you can take two companions out with you, rather than just one at a time. So it looks like that's going to be limited um, to a max of two companions out with you at a time. Which, uh, some people may be disappointed about, because it's not going to be like Wasteland 2, where you can have eight companions all following you around at once, but I mean, for a game this complex, it's probably smart to keep that to a minimum, because in Fallout 3 in New Vegas, um, sometimes your companions would glitch out and um, really cause a lot of problems, or you could lose companions, like I lost Edie in, um, or Eddie in uh, the, the vault, what vault was it? I don't know what vault it was, the one with all the plant stuff. Um, I blew that up, blew up the hallway, and I lost him because I couldn't get him to follow me. I couldn't send him home. But So this will keep it down to two, but it'll allow you to take two rather than just one, which is going to be your base, just you and one companion, and then this will add a second. And at the max rank, your companions can cooperate, and they can heal each other. So that'll be cool, so you don't have to do so much maintenance on your companions while they're out uh, during combat. They can go ahead and heal each other and work together. Next on the list is Wasteland Whisperer, which is pretty much the same as Animal Friend, but it's going to affect Wasteland creatures, so like mutated things, um, not your fuzzy little animals, maybe rad scorpions would fall into this, death claws possibly would fall into this. Um, I'm not sure about like ghouls or mutants, but you try it and see. Um, and that's going to do the same thing, so pacification at the first rank, and then at the second rank you can incite them to attack and max rank you can give them specific commands and what those specific commands are we can only speculate but I would imagine it's things like follow me or guard this area things like that um, the next one on the list is called intimidation and this is the same as wasteland whisper and animal friend but this is gonna affect humans so if you wanna dominate people and order them around and be a tyrant dictator this is the perk for you at first rank, you can pacify by aiming your gun at a lower level human, and then at second rank, you can tell them to attack, and max rank, you can ask them to do specific tasks, hopefully like guarding a settlement. So let me know what you think about those perks and what you'll be picking up for your build. Um, again, sources are orcs.com and vault111.com, plus my own insight. Go ahead and check those sites out. Like, subscribe, comment, and join me for my stream on twitch.tv slash blackfly303 starting November 9th at 11 p.m. Um, we're going to go as non-stop as possible until we get through the first playthrough. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.